Kevin McCarthy here on the Warner Brothers lot in Burbank, California, getting ready to geek out with the cast of Man of Steel. Right behind me, I'm freaking out. Henry Cavill's actual costume from the film, as well as Diane Lane, Kevin Costner's, and Russell Crowe's. Stay tuned for the interviews coming up next, right here on Geek Nation. Congratulations to you, man. Thank you very much. I get these things called nerd tears because I can't handle the epicness of the action. Do you, does Superman approve of the nerd tears? That Absolutely approve. You yeah. do? Yes, 100% approve. Be yourself, enjoy it. Don't try and try and be cool or something because you know you think it's not cool. Love do it. it, experience it. If you feel tears coming, you feel laughter. If you feel like roaring and shouting, do it, enjoy I was, it. I was doing cartwheels in the theater. Yeah, well, I, I like, mean, don't ruin the experience <laughs> for anyone else, but. <laughs> yeah, like, why is there a 3D foot coming in my yeah, face? Yeah, what the? <laughs> now, I'm a huge geek about movies and how they're made. I, I've okay. always wanted to know, like, you know, when you do the flying scenes, like, mm -hmm. the, the dry on your face, the close up of your face, what does that look like as you're shooting it on set? Um, you're either on a wire or you're in a belly pan um, or you're just on a green screen. A belly pan? A belly pan is like a, the mold, a mold of a human shape, the front okay. of a human shape, and you lie in it. And our belly pan had this sort of special handle coming off it. And so when the director would shout, bank left, they bank left, I knew what was gonna happen. So the, the whole thing moved. I do whatever move I'm gonna do to be banking left or banking left. And it's, that's what it is. It's, it's, it's a big green environment, really. By the way, it's super uncomfortable because he's got to hold his body, kind of, he's doing pl basically planking. He's muscular, he can handle Yeah, it. exactly. And then he uh, blows some wind on him, and then John Clothier, the camera operator, stands in front of him and, and shakes the camera like this. Okay, he, not glamorous, but. They really shake the camera? That's they interesting. They literally shake the camera, yeah. Well, that was the thing. Like, we really wanted to, I know this sounds crazy, but you could do all that in post, right? You could shake yeah. the camera. But I said, no, let's try it. Let's shake it for real. Just vibrate the camera for real. Because one of the things I said in the visual effects shots, I was like, look, these shots should be hard to get, right? right. When Superman's flying, those are hard shots. They should feel like they were hard to film. Right. And I really wanted at all times, whenever like you're shooting, flying and stuff, like, ah, this is really hard to shoot. Oh my gosh, we're going so fast. So like that comes from, you know, this crazy vibration. And, and so I'd be like shaking the mag and, you know, helping John shake the camera. So incredible. And John's really good at it anyways. Goodbye, my son. My hopes and dreams travel with you. He'll be an outcast. I'll kill him. How? He'll be a god to them. I love the whole idea of this character and the self-discovery mission that he goes on trying to figure out who he is. As an actor, as Henry Cavill, when you play this role and you leave the set, what is the one thing you learned about yourself and what is the one thing you learned about yourself as an actor? Is that I will, I'm willing to really work like an insane person. Like uh, the hours were very, very long. And um, it was only afterwards where I look back and I go, whoa, yeah. like, I mean, we did five months of prep and then six months of shooting and that shooting were all, you know, 30 hour days to 50 hour days in Vancouver. And I enjoyed it. It was exhausting and hard work, but I enjoyed it. And it was a nice sort of thing, proof to myself, say that I will work and I will struggle through all the really hard stuff. And, you know, I look up to my brothers for the things they've achieved. Um, got one of the Royal Marines who's been through tours of Afghanistan and Iraq and Sierra Leone and the hardship he's put himself through. And I say, I wonder if I would do that, if I could do that. And although I don't know if I could do it in that military capacity and certainly in the way he's done it because I haven't tried myself at it, um, I know I can do it in the capacity as far as the workload of this acting is, convert is concerned. And um, that, that is what I took away from it. What if a child dreamed of becoming something other than what society had intended? What if a child aspired to something greater? I was just talking to Zach about your, your, your armor, and, and he, because obviously it looks so real on screen, he said a lot of it was CGI, and you were walking around in pajamas, so mm. when you, have to play a villain in pajamas. Yeah. How do you get to that mindset? I don't get that. It's really hard. <laughs> I, I actually, I remember, it's so funny, I'm just remembering this, but I said, Zach, just please don't make me wear a silly suit. And he's like, oh, I promise, man, you're not gonna have to do that. Because I was like, I don't think I can do it. If I have to wear a silly suit, I don't think I can pull it off. And then I get there and he 
I look in my trailer and I open the closet and there's the silly suit. I was like, Zach, you said I wouldn't have to wear the silly suit. What does it like, look like? It's, it's, it's like you look like a jester, like the court jester or something. You need a little hat with the bells hanging off. But, uh, but he's like, look, you know, the point is, if I tried to wear that suit of armor that I have in a movie, I would have... I would have been crushed. It's like an iron lung, you know. Could, I, I probably can. I'd be like, Superman, come back, <laughs> come back here, come, come I, I get you, I get you. So, Man of Steel uh, two. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> the slowest moving villain ever, General I, Zod. I'd pay to see that. Yeah. I, I'd pay to see General Bod. Yeah, General Bod. <laughs> <General, laughs> <laughs> My son was in the bus. He saw what Clark did. You're the answer, son. You're the answer to are we alone in the universe. Can I just keep pretending I'm your son? You are my son. I get these things called nerd tears because I geek <laughs> out so hard in a movie that I- I fucking I... love you already, man. <laughs> I feel like I've just improved my vocabulary. <laughs> I feel like a man can pull his shit off, <laughs> and I just like there's a lot going on with You're you. Learning. I, say, I love the whole idea of self-discovery hmm. and this character going through self-discovery. Right. I was thinking about all the characters that you've played in your career so far. If you could pinpoint one that helped you discover more about yourself, which character would you say that is? It's a hard question, and I don't I don't have that that answer. But you know, the truth is, I play characters I wish I was. Huh. You know, I've certainly played people that are braver than me, and I've played people that are smarter than myself. And, you know, for as corny as the movies are, for what movies people say, you can't believe them, you can learn more about how to behave as a person yeah. by watching it. Because you, in the dark, you look up there and you go, that's who I want to be and that's who I don't want to be. And even the sociopath goes, even a sociopath that's sitting in a theater goes, that guy's a rat. <laughs> now that guy maybe walks out of the theater as a real rat in his own life, but the movies can identify can, it. movies yeah. can show us how we want to be when things are the toughest, and that's really when you're measured almost in anything in life is when things are toughest. Yeah, your character d almost discovers herself while he's also discovering himself Absolutely. at the same time. So I wanted to ask you, as an actress and all the characters you've played in your career, even if it's this one, what is the character that most taught you about who you are as a person? If you could pinpoint one. Wow, that taught me about who I was as a person. Um, oh my goodness, isn't it interesting? It's always, it's always the making of the film that teaches me about who I was really? as a person. Yeah, more than just the character. I always not to get all deep, but like no. on this one, I was away, I was coming back and forth from my daughter a lot, and I was started to feel really sad and kind of guilty about it. And I thought, well, I'm committed to this, and so what can I do at this time to better myself? And I started doing a lot more reading about parenting, and I started doing yoga, and I started just really focusing on being a better parent through being away. Does that make sense? That's so I, I had a great epiphany on this. Is there one that you could pinpoint that helped you discover more about who you are as a person? Hmm. It's interesting. I mean, I think the most personal movie for me that I ever made was was Take Shelter, probably. Mm. Yeah. That was very personal. I don't know if it necessarily taught me anything, but it was just something that I could relate to. Uh, the experience that Curtis was having in that movie was something I could relate to. I don't know if it necessarily it's funny, when people mention the idea of learning something from a movie you've done, I, it's more like you're trying to deliver something that you've learned from life to the audience through your performance, rather than learning something from the, doing the movie. I don't know. And I have to believe that you were sent here for a reason. And even if it takes the rest of your life, you owe it to yourself to find out what that reason is. How do you find someone who has spent a lifetime covering his tracks? For some, he was a guardian angel. I love the whole relatability of the character. I found myself, yeah. I mean, even though he's an alien and he's Superman, I still found myself relating to everything you were doing on screen. Good. When you were, I want to ask you, when you were young, when you were in high school or middle school, were you ever picked on for being, ever being different? Everyone was picked on yeah. in school. I mean, kids are kids. Like, uh, I don't think any one of us has not been picked on. Yeah. Um, 
And it wasn't like I used any kind of being picked on as a relatable thing. What I used was, um, as an actor, you travel the world, you're meeting new people, leaving those people, having no friends, meeting new people, making new friends. It's a constant sort of like replacement of people. And some of these people you stay in touch with, some don't, uh, but generally temporary family for a shoot, it's over and you're like, okay, cool. Now where am I gonna live? Uh, now who am I gonna hang out with? Like, who are my friends? Um, it's that sense of loneliness. And um, I applied that to the character more than anything else. For others, a ghost who never quite fit in. You will give the people of Earth an ideal to strive towards. They will race behind you. They will stumble. They will fall. I think you've perfectly blended Zimmer's score with action like I've never seen before. It was just unbelievable what you were able to do with this movie. But I want to ask you, as a director, you make your, your score a leading character in your film. He yeah. is a leading character with all the other characters going on in the film. Perfect. So I want to ask you, do you direct a score as if you would direct an actor? Well, the conversations I have with Hans are very much like the conversations I have with the actors. You know, like it's it, absolutely, it, I mean, Hans and I, you know, we spend weeks talking before he even, you know, put down a single note, I'm sure. And by the way, by the time he did, I was like, Hans, where's the score? And he was like, ah, I'm sure he's procrastinating, but, yes. <laughs> but no, he really crushed it in an amazing way. I was, I was, I couldn't have been happier with it. It's, it's, it was awesome. I, I'm kind of a geek about how movies are made. And I, I know you shot 35 anamorphic, right? Mm -hmm. uh, now the lens flares, I'm a huge fan of those. I think they really add to like the film. I just think they look absolutely gorgeous. Are those all done naturally? Is that done with like a, do you digitally put some Outside of those in? Outside the visual effects shots? Yeah, they're all natural. They're just exactly what the, glass does when light shines in it it's not just is what it is it's no um and of course what we did is uh for the visual effects we would shoot um we would take our lenses and we'd shoot them over black and shine lights in to get lens flares and then use those lens flares in the visual effects shots so they were all organic like lens flares and not like out of like a you know stock bank of lens right. flares yeah it's so but in time they will join you in the sun. In time, you will help them accomplish wonders. Now, um, the whole concept of his character being this, like, obviously this Superman, but he's also so vulnerable yeah. and so insecure about certain elements of his life. Sure. As an actress, when you're on a set making a film, what is the element of acting where you find yourself the most vulnerable? Wow. You have good questions. Um, what are the, what's the element of, oh, acting makes me feel vulnerable all the time. Because you're so like exposed? You're so exposed, yeah. Um, you know, I, yeah, it's constantly, just even, even when you're, yeah, I wish I could tell you which element of it, but it can be as simple as like, some days you show up and you feel like you own the world and you're like, this is awesome. And then some days you feel up and you're like, you show up and you're feeling a little more introspective and you have to go put yourself out there. And you know, um, if you're lucky, you're working with a crew and a director and a cast like on this, like you felt powerful every time you were on set. Zach is awesome, that's his word. Because he literally will get you so pumped and when he's got it, he goes, awesome, awesome. Let's do, let's do it again. Like he's so into it so it's a lot of fun to work with him and you don't feel as vulnerable working with somebody like zach you know who's just so in it and like yeah he's awesome he is he, awesome. he's awesome so, yeah, he yeah really is. exactly you believe your son is safe i will find him and I was thinking, when you watch a movie, mm -hmm. I always think to myself, what would I do in that situation if I was that guy? Would I do the same thing? Have you ever found yourself in real life come into a, a decision based on a role that you've played? Like, has you ever? Ooh, I had a situation happen the other night. Oh. It was interesting. Um, I like her. Just she's like, she just went back to fourth grade. Ooh, 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 ooh. Yeah. <laughs> me, me. Oh, We're I'm ready. Like... I have something. I have something. I love this. <laughs> uh, okay. okay. I, I was time. at a girlfriend's son's concert. And my girlfriend was on an airplane. She missed the concert. It was so sad, but she was just at the airport. And I said, I'll dial her and she can listen to it while she's boarding her flight. And she's sitting in, flying to Ken. This is Laura Dern and her dad. And her dad won when they were there. It was so great. Congratulations, Bruce. Well, I digress. Well, 
immeasurably, but I learned that from a movie because I did that in Secretariat. Oh I had gosh. somebody play me what I was missing of my child's life on the phone. Mm. And it was, I learn. We learn from movies. So how great is that? That happens. I just want to know if your shoes are on camera because we need to pan down. Yeah, look at these. Shoes. Look at these. I mean, so no, no, they don't look like his shoes. I mean, those, <laughs> yours, I like the sandals as well. My father believed that if the world found out who I really was, it'd reject me. He was convinced that the world wasn't ready. What do you think? Now, when you cast younger actors to, to uh, obviously be the younger Superman, younger Clark Kent, does Henry ever get to go in there and say, that guy kind of looks like me? Would he have any approval No, of that? no, but we got pictures of Henry when he was little. Oh. And we'd be like, oh, that one's not too bad. <laughs> That's yeah, cool. by the way, uh, they really, the, you look the, just the, like the kids do look really, a it's, lot it's like It's incredible. Him. Yeah, but when a character, when, I'm kind of a geek about movies, sorry. When, uh, no, it's awesome. When, some, when somebody, when a character is in a visual effects shot, and they're like, let's say they're on a ship, and they come in and they land, and then that they end up walking out of that shot. Yeah. How do they become? When do you? How do you transition from the digital what to the we real? Did, like in, in a lot of those cases, um, say for instance, Zod uh, landing at the Kent farm. Yeah. Uh, those shots were done. We had a big green staircase. Right. Made of plywood. It's the cheapest thing you could think of. <laughs> um, and then we put a big platform at the top, so the cast could all stand up there, so it could fit. So they would come down the stairs. So basically we would like, you know, the doors would open, uh, you know, the CG doors will open, and then they come down. And of course that's all CG armor and everything on, on, uh, on Michael. Is it really? Yeah, so all that armor CG. So he's in these like pajamas, <laughs> which he did not like, by the way. He said, the first day shooting, because I had said like, oh, you're gonna be the scary General Zod, you're gonna be in this awesome armor. And he, he was like, oh, cool. And we'd, um, we hadn't shot anything yet. Like we had, so it's cut, cause some of the Krypton stuff is real. Yeah. So he got, you know, to, a chance to say like, oh, okay, this is cool, this looks good. But that stuff he hadn't, so I go, you're gonna look awesome, it's gonna be, and so he comes out in his little, like pajamas, and he's like, this is, how am I supposed to be scary in this? <laughs> you should have pulled a Fincher and put a frame of him just as a pajamas somewhere in the movie. Oh yeah. Like a really, like a really quick one frame. <laughs> that would have been it so was, by the way, I felt so bad. Funny. I felt bad because he really, he really, uh, he really was not upset, but he was like, wow, I really got it. And I go, look, you know, help me. Make it cool. awesome. What's the S stand for? It's not an S. On my world, it means hope. Well, here it's an S. How about... Excuse me.